Our people negotiated a treaty in 1864 and reserved lands and uh, with those lands came their uh, reserved rights uh, to exercise uh, our rights to hunt, fish, trap, gather uh, and to uh, exist as uh, the people that uh, we believe uh, our Creator intended us to be. And we reserve those rights through a negotiation of the treaty that was ratified in Congress. And this treaty was negotiated under Article 6 of the Constitution, which declares treaties as the law of the land. And that treaty established this relationship between uh, the United States as our trustee, uh, that they were to uh, look out and protect our interests uh, forever. And uh, uh, certainly we believe it's a responsibility of uh, uh, even the regulatory uh, uh, bodies such as the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission to fully consider impacts to our, our life, lifestyle, to our hunting, uh, fishing, trapping, and even cultural and spiritual uses of the lands. So from our perspective, there's a responsibility to do that. And uh, we should weigh as heavily or even more heavily in consideration uh, of a project such as this to, to move forward. My uh, Modoc name is Modokne Watch, means Modoc Horse. And uh, this is our ancestral land right here. And there's a lot of uh, controversy with the pipeline and uh, things going through and they're here and uh, they want us to continue with this uh, not having this pipeline go through so that's why all our tribal people are behind us too A huge fossil fuel company called Verizon has been trying for years to force a 235 mile highly pressurized pipeline through southern Oregon called the Pacific Connector Pipeline. This pipeline would transport fracked gas from Canada, Colorado, Wyoming, and Utah from a fossil fuel hub starting in Malin, Oregon and terminating in Coos Bay, where it would be shipped overseas from a mega liquefied natural gas terminal called the Jordan Cove LNG Export Terminal. This project was first proposed over 12 years ago, but by the end of the Obama administration, the project was dead in the water. The project had been denied by the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission as a result of massive opposition from local residents. The impacts to landowners and local communities, as well as the lack of contracts from companies willing to buy the gas, reinforced opposition to this project. As soon as the Trump administration stepped into office, Verison applied again, and the new Trump administration has highlighted Jordan Cove as a top priority for their fossil fuel agenda. Uh, my name is Sammy Jinsaw. I come from the village of Rekwa. I'm the director of the Ancestral Guard. This pipeline is not for the people. This pipeline is everything that is wrong with American society today. Our forefathers in the very beginning didn't fight so big corporations could overtake everything and take away the freedom of the people. Our forefathers fought for the chance to live a free and healthy life and that is what we will continue to fight for. I mean, you can just take a look at this. This is just, this is everything that I'm made out of. There's nothing much more to it. This is everything that I've ever had, and it's probably everything I'll ever have. So anybody would want to protect that. And that's why I think it's so important for me to protect it, so I have the capability to pass down this beautiful place to the future generations as it was passed down to me by my grandfathers and grandmothers. Here's what you need to know about the Pacific Connector Fracked Gas Pipeline and the Jordan Cove LNG Export Project. The project consists of four parts. Fracking to extract natural gas in Colorado, Wyoming, and Canada. The Pacific Connector Pipeline, which would be a 235-mile pipeline starting in Malin, Oregon and terminating in Coos Bay. 
the Jordan Cove LNG Export Terminal in Coos Bay to supercool the gas, and the fracked gas tankers, which would transport the gas overseas. Liquefied natural gas, or LNG, is a fossil fuel that is supercooled to minus 260 degrees Fahrenheit to transform the gas from a vapor to a liquid. The gas in the pipeline would be extracted in Canada, Wyoming, or Colorado, depending on what is the cheapest, through a process called fracking. Fracking includes drilling deep holes, shooting chemicals and water into earth to fracture it, and capturing the gas that escapes. Fracking is known to cause water contamination, health impacts, and earthquakes in surrounding areas, as well as release methane gas, which is a powerful source of climate pollution. The gas would be transported through a new pipeline called the Pacific Connector Pipeline. This would be a 36-inch, 235-mile highly pressurized pipeline. The pipeline would start in Malin, Oregon, where it would connect to the Ruby Pipeline. At this connection site, Verison would construct a compressor station to pressurize the gas in the pipeline. Compressor stations are known to be extremely loud in polluting facilities, disrupting the health and quality of life for nearby communities. They release toxic air pollution like benzene and formaldehyde. In other states, people living close to compressor stations have suffered from nosebleeds, rashes, headaches, sore throats, dizziness, and nausea. And some of these air toxins are known to increase the risk of cancer. The pipeline would cross through traditional tribal territories, threatening burial grounds and cultural resources. The Klamath, Yurok, and Karuk tribes have all officially opposed the LNG pipeline. My name is Don Gentry. I'm chairman of the Klamath tribes. Uh, our people are so concerned about the Pacific Connector pipeline, you know, the impacts to our interests that we have. Uh, one of the significant concerns that we pointed out from the start is the potential impact on uh, our uh, village sites and actually associated uh, burials. Uh, where the proposed uh, route is, we'll go through an area that's a uh, longtime historical uh, village area for our people. And uh, what we know about the area, every time uh, there seems to be ground disturbance in the area, whether it's widening of a highway or other activities, uh, human remains are often exposed. We're very concerned. Uh, one way I thought about this is perhaps uh, for folks to relate to uh, a folk myth, say that uh, you have a piece of property and you know that there's a, a cemetery there with unmarked graves. Uh, just the idea of going through that area with not knowing uh, where that cemetery is, uh, uh, it seems like it'd be a concern, you know, that maybe folks could relate to. Uh, we've had reburials in the past. Uh, uh, one of the ones that I participated in is when they widened uh, the bridge area on Highway 97 where the bridge crosses the, the river there and uh, numerous human remains were found. And, uh, we had a reburial activity that included our people and elders and uh, culture and heritage department. And uh, though it seems um, uh, like we should feel distant from our ancestors, we're not. Uh, it was traumatic. It was a difficult thing for our people. So, uh, and it just, uh, frankly, uh, it just helped, you know, kind of adds to this feeling that we're not as important as uh, other projects or other things, you know, when our human remains are, are disturbed. So there is a sense of uh, injustice, you know, and that's uh, around all of this whole project, this uh, environmental uh, justice issue. Uh, tribes, the Klamath tribes, and folks concerned about the environment uh, and that will be maybe be impacted by this uh, seem to uh, be uh, lower on the priority list, at least in some folks' minds, uh, uh, that uh, we should be able to take another hit to our concerns and the resources or uh, uh, be uh, uh, agreeable to some risk uh, to uh, our resources and, and uh, so we seem to be uh, less important than others. And uh, our tribe has historically suffered a lot of loss in, uh, for the gain of uh, other folks. So this just seems to be another project. It feels like uh, our people uh, are again uh, battling uh, what seems like insurmountable odds. odds uh, uh, entities that have a lot of money. Uh, it seems like uh, the interest in 
uh, maybe jobs or economics uh, seem to take uh, uh, precedent over these other valid concerns. I think the jury's still out on, on uh, what the jobs would really mean to our, our local area here. And, uh, but as we've looked at this, the more we learn about the project and the potential risks and uh, how it not only impacts us here locally uh, or regionally, uh, it impacts uh, uh, the world. You know, uh, that's another thing that our folks have really come to uh, uh, understand. Uh, you know, the, this whole uh, natural gas industry isn't as clean as what it's been um, purported to be and, and stated to be. And, and I've even seen uh, recent ads in the ad campaign in the state of Oregon. I'm not sure how far it extends beyond, but, you know, trying to promote uh, natural gas as natural is clean and uh, uh, certainly uh, what we know about uh, the gas that's coming through the Pacific Connector, you know, how they obtain the gas through fracking, we know this isn't something that's uh, uh, beneficial to the environment, unacceptable risks. But in terms of uh, global warming and just the, that seems to uh, um, be a significant change and it's a part of that, you know, so as a tribe that's concerned about uh, even water-related issues in the basin, you know, the effects on climate are significantly a, a big concern to us. Uh, how water affects uh, forests and uh, the resources we depend on in the forest and how it affects uh, fisheries and other treaty resources we have is very significant. So, um, you know, certainly concerned about uh, um, what seems to be more of a benefit to uh, the natural gas companies uh, at the risk and loss of our people uh, and even the nation. You know, it's really very, in the private landowners uh, that may be affected through uh, uh, eminent domain and the taking of their property. Uh, it just doesn't seem uh, that this definitely benefits the U.S. citizens. It's expected that uh, if we, when we ship this uh, natural gas to, uh, uh, to foreign markets that are willing to pay a high price, that's gonna bring the price of natural gas up here in the nation. Uh, in terms of energy independence, it doesn't seem to be correct. It seems like we uh, uh, are doing a significant turnaround, you know, and being uh, self-sufficient energy-wise. So uh, certainly don't understand uh, uh, how, uh, this project could move forward and benefit uh, uh, the oil companies and uh, not benefit our nation, have a negative impact on our people, uh, impact on uh, landowners in the region, yet uh, marginal economic uh, benefit. Uh, and uh, certainly concerned about every aspect of this, not only locally, but uh, just our dependence upon uh, uh, fossil fuels uh, and the risk to humans. Uh, you know, what I've, the more you learn about this uh, project and the impacts it may have on the folks in uh, Coos Bay and the risk to the citizens there, uh, it's just, uh, it, the more I learn, uh, the less viable this project looks. And uh, uh, it certainly can't be justified from our perspective. Uh, the risks and uh, uh, the known impacts don't outweigh any potential benefits uh, for the select few. The pipeline threatens 400 rivers and streams in Oregon, including Klamath, Rogue, Umpqua, and Coquille and Coos Rivers. Under the major rivers, Verison will use a drilling technique called horizontal directional drilling. A risk of drilling includes frack outs, where drilling fluid and sediment could flow into our rivers. In fact, environmental agencies in Pennsylvania just halted the construction of a similar pipeline on the East Coast due to leaks and contamination of drilling fluids into wetlands, creeks, and rivers. Constructing a pipeline across 400 rivers and streams would damage critical salmon and steelhead habitat and affect farms, fishing, and the cultural heritage of our communities. Over 630 Southern Oregon landowners are affected by this pipeline, and the private property rights of hundreds are being threatened with eminent domain by a private corporation. Eminent domain means that if landowners along the pipeline route don't accept a small, one-time payment for permanent use of their land for the pipeline, the government will grant Verison the power to take their land away. The terminal, the pipeline, and the tankers pose a serious safety risk to rural communities. 
When the LNG is exposed to air, it evaporates extremely rapidly, producing explosive gas vapor which can cause massive explosions. LNG tankers are at least three times the size of a football field. Spills from LNG tankers are considered to be more dangerous than oil tankers. The tankers would pass through a narrow channel and densely populated communities and would be built in a region that is vulnerable to earthquakes and tsunamis. Many agencies agree that Coos Bay is directly located in an area called the Cascadia Subduction Zone. The Cascadia Subduction Zone is a 600-mile fault that runs from Northern California up to British Columbia and is located 70 to 100 miles off the Pacific shoreline. Studies find the Coos Bay area is more vulnerable to northern stretches of the Cascadia subduction zone. Scientists are predicting a 40% chance of a mega thrust earthquake of 9.0 plus and a tsunami of up to 100 feet in height in this vault zone in the next 50 years. The U.S. Department of Energy commissioned a report with Sandia National Laboratories and found that if a tanker ran aground and suffered a leak, LNG could pour into the water and freeze, creating a large vapor cloud of gas which could ignite if diluted with oxygen. The terminal and the pipeline also threaten rural communities. For example, in 2014, the Plymouth LNG facility in Washington exploded, injuring workers and forcing hundreds of residents to evacuate their homes. The pipeline full of high pressurized gas would pass through an area already at high risk of wildfires. This project would be a huge step backwards for the climate. The mega export terminal proposed for Coos Bay would become the largest source of climate pollution in the entire state of Oregon, which would violate Oregon Law House Bill 3543, which targets reducing Oregon's greenhouse gas emissions. According to the U.S. Department of Energy, exporting LNG can raise domestic gas prices. Even Avista Senior Vice President Jason Thaxton said that exporting LNG puts pressure on prices that wouldn't be good for our customers. The city of Klamath Falls calls itself the City of Sunshine and claims to have 300 days of sunshine per year. It also sports a geothermal heating system throughout its whole downtown area and... They are also home to one of the premier technical colleges on the west coast of the United States, which itself is fully sustainable with its own geothermal power plant and solar array. Yet the commissioners of Klamath County, without public comment, voted to approve the LNG pipeline going through their lands, disregarding the clean and renewable energy path that is open to them. In Klamath County, the 1.7 billion 235 mile Pacific Connector project would run northwest of Malin, south of Klamath Falls, before crossing under Dead Indian Memorial Road and exiting the county on a tract of the Fremont Wanima National Forest. The Klamath tribes are deeply disappointed in our local Klamath County commissioners who approve this pipeline without public comment. In addition, the Klamath County Chamber of Commerce also approved this pipeline. What can you do? Contact Oregon's elected leaders. Our state government can stop Trump from forcing this fracked gas pipeline on Oregonians. In addition to federal permits, this project requires permits from the state. Governor Kate Brown has portrayed herself as someone willing to stand up to the Trump agenda with strong stances on environmental and climate action. Senators Wyden and Merkley could put pressure on both FERC and the Trump administration by speaking out against this project. Both senators applauded former President Obama when he rejected the Keystone Pipeline in the Midwest. The federal government should be taking bold action against climate change and boosting renewable energy and the low carbon economy, according to Wyden at the time. We need our state representatives to uphold Oregon law and continue to protect Oregon's green initiatives by publicly opposing the corporate projects that violate tribal treaty rights, Oregon law, personal rights, and ruin our environment for future generations. Take action by contacting Governor Brown, Senator Wyden, Senator Merkley, Congressman Walden today and ask them to oppose the fracking pipeline and export project. Help speed our transition to renewable energy and greater energy efficiency. Call Governor Brown at 503-378-4582. Senator Wyden at 202-224-5244. Senator Merkley at 202-224-3753. And Congressman Walden at 
202-225-6730. For more information, go to No LNG Exports on Facebook or visit NoLNGExports.org on the World Wide Web.